In this video, we will take a closer look at some of the hidden features in the DJI Fly app for the Mavic Mini. But before we get to that, let's roll that intro. Welcome to another video. I'm Henrik Olsen, and if you want to learn how to make better videos with your drone and camera in general, then consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. You might have gotten your hands on a Mavic Mini recently and started to play around with it. And apart from some of the apparent functionality that you see once you launch the DJI Fly app, there's actually quite a few more features hidden away below the top surface that will expand the functionality of the drone and take your user experience to a whole new level. I just installed a fresh version of the app from the App Store, so the experience will be exactly the same if you use it on an iOS device. Let's dive right in. So this is how the flight screen looks like the first time that you launch the app. I don't want to spend time on this video to go through the basic elements on this flight screen. I actually made a comprehensive guide how you get started completely from scratch and you can access this through this card. But there is one thing on the start screen that I want to point out and it's very easy to switch between the three flight modes that's available with the Mavic Mini. You simply just tap on the flight mode indicator and that will allow you to easily switch between the three flight modes available. So just tap it. So you can see that it switches between the flight modes and that's pretty handy when you're in the field and you want to use sport mode to get fast to the things that you want to film and then switch into cine mode to do slow and steady shots. Before we jump into the deep stuff, there's another thing that I want to show you. If you tap this error message in top of the screen, you get fast access to setting the return to home altitude as well as the max altitude and distance. Apart from easy access to these parameters, there's some additional functionality I think you will find quite useful. So if we scroll down, you'll see that you have a, a shortcut that will allow you to format the SD card. You also have information about how much storage is left on the card, which makes the formatting uh, quite uh, useful to have uh, close by. Below that, there's something that's even more useful, and that is access to the remaining recording time on the SD card. So if uh, you kind of uh, know that you have one or two batteries left, then you want to make sure that there is more than one hour available here in uh, this indicator in the bottom of the screen. So now let's proceed into the app and uh, let me show you some of the more hidden functionality. And we do that by accessing uh, the menu system by the three dots in the upper right corner. And in here, the app has been divided into five sections, each uh, covering separate parts of the drone. First we have safety, then we have something about the controller, then we have something related to the camera, the transmission, the Wi-Fi transmission for the drone, last but not least something about the drone. Let's head over to the about section. In here you have all the usual information about the aircraft firmware, the remote controller firmware, FlySafe database, uh, all that stuff, and the app version that you're running. You also have the current information about the battery that's currently plugged into the drone, including how many times it has been charged. There are shortcuts for you to check for updates for the firmware directly within the app, and you can also update the FlySafe uh, database uh, directly here from the app. Most of this uh, you will be prompted automatically uh, when you uh, launch the app. So in general, you don't need to worry about that. But there is another little thing up here is uh, you can change the default name of the drone if you want to call it something else. So in that way you can give it its own custom name. Let's jump over to the transmission tab and this is where you can see what's going on in terms of uh, connectivity. And as you probably know, uh, I have been uh, struggling a bit with the connectivity issues uh, with my Mavic uh, Mini, especially because it's a CE version. And in here you can see how polluted uh, the Wi-Fi actually is that you are flying in. And you can also see what kind of a band, frequency band that it's currently using. And in uh, my case here, I'm uh, running at the 5.8 gigahertz and uh, it's uh, to channel 149. The channel 149 to 165, those are all the 5.8 gigahertz ones. And the one from 1 to 13, as far as I recall, are the ones for 2.4 gigahertz. So you can decide to force it into a manual mode and then manually select the channel. But in case that you select a channel that, is, uh, that becomes polluted, then you might run into problems. So I would at all time recommend running this in auto. 
In that way, the drone will automatically switch away from a Wi-Fi channel if it gets polluted. Let's jump into the camera section. Here you can choose if your pictures are going to be the traditional 4.3 or the more flat format used for thumbnails, the 16x9. I normally use the 4.3. And then there is redundant information about how much space is available on the SD card as well as a shortcut for formatting like we saw on from the front screen. But down here, this is where it gets really, really interesting. It's uh, under the advanced settings. From the advanced settings menu, you will be able to add functionality that will help you step up your photo and video game. One of my favorites is the histogram. Let's just add that one and jump to the front screen here. So you will see now I have the histogram. And uh, for those of you that have been following the channel would know that the histogram is a graphical representation of the dark and light areas uh, in the scene. So this is very, very helpful to uh, show if the picture that you are taking is under or overexposed. We can just try and play a little bit around with the exposure compensation value. So if I overexpose it like this, you would see that the, the histogram moves to the right, meaning that it's way overexposed. I can also underexpose it and you can see that the charge moves to the left side, which means that it's underexposed. In an ideal world, your histogram is nicely positioned between left and right and not being shoved to one, one of the sides. So let's just try and put it in like that. I would have to overexpose it maybe by 0 0.7 like that. So in that case, my picture is uh, perfectly exposed and I can check it with the uh, histogram that is available. So that's a pretty nice feature. Another helpful tool is to know about the rule of thirds, where you're going to divide your picture into nine equally sized squares. I will encourage you to look up the strategy of the rule of third to improve your composition. But we can enable a grid that will help us uh, align stuff. But the main idea with the rule of third is that you position uh, objects of interest in the cross section of uh, the lines. I can also add diagonal lines that will help me in case that I want to film something of uh, symmetry or I want to keep something in the center of the frame. If I don't like the diagonal lines or think they are too messy on my screen, I can simply take them away and then add a simple cross in the center of the screen. I would normally use these two options along with the histogram when I'm out filming. There's another tool available that will help you very easily detect if your footage is overexposed. And that is called an overexposure warning surprise. But it's actually shown as the zebra stripes inside the main screen when you see it. These stripes they will not show on the final footage. They will just show you areas of the footage that is overexposed. And in that case, you can see the sky is totally blown out in this case. So what I need to do here is I basically need to lower this the exposure of the footage. Of course, everything gets uh, pretty dark. But what you see now is that the, the sky is no longer indicated as overexposed. So this is sort of the idea. If something starts to get overexposed, you will get the, the zebra stripes as an indicator that something is uh, wrong. And that might be okay. You can decide to leave it like that, but at least it's very easy for you to know that the areas of your footage is always exposed. Then there is the anti-flicker function, and those are mainly uh, something that you're gonna use if you fly at uh, nighttime around artificial light that uh, you wanna compensate so it doesn't flicker in your footage. I normally leave that at auto. Down here you have video subtitles and you might be thinking, why do I need video subtitles on my drone video? It works in this way that the drone stores flight information in a subtitle file called SRT that can later be played back together with the video. The SRT file is stored on the SD card on the drone. I've not tried the function on the Mavic Mini yet, so I don't know what information that it's actually storing. Maybe you know, then leave it in the comment below. Then there is the cache recording option and with that one enabled, it will store a low resolution thumbnail and video of what you actually are recording. And it's like a running buffer. So once the buffer is, in this case, two gigabyte is full, then it will start to delete the older files. The smart part about this is that you will be able to watch the footage that you have recorded or the pictures that you have been taken instantly after the flight. And that's pretty smart because then you don't need to download the footage from the SD card onto the phone to be able to preview it. Because that can take quite a while. There is a reset camera settings in the bottom in case you have put yourself into a position where you need to reset it. Let's jump into the control section. In here, you have access to the flight modes available. You have also the possibility to change the units if you want something else. Then. 
we have some of the more uh, exciting stuff. You might have noticed playing around with the Mini right now that when you operate the gimbal, it's not very soft. It's uh, actually a little bit rough also when it stops. It's far from being smooth. But that can be fixed here under the advanced uh, menu here. So if we go in here, you have the possibility to set the pitch speed, which is basically uh, the gimbal rotation speed. So if I mess around with that, let's see that I, I move it up here, you see that it goes very fast. But I can pull it down here to maybe, I don't know, 10 maybe. And then you want to make sure that when it stops, the stop motion is being smoothed out. And that can be solved by messing around with the smoothness here. In that way, you can get some of the smooth uh, clips that you see online um, because you prevent the gimbal from stopping very abrupt. There's another uh, small uh, detail in here is uh, there's an upward gimbal rotation. You can see right now it stops at the sort of uh, horizon. If I go in here back in the menu and, and I enable this upward gimbal rotation, I can tilt it 30 degrees above the horizon. And that is a pretty nice feature if you're flying low and you want to capture something under a bridge or such. So that will extend the rotation of uh, the gimbal. And again, if you don't like the settings, you simply just press reset in the button and it will jump back to the default settings. So with the gimbal motion out of the way, there are a few other options that you can play around with. You can uh, change how the gimbal is uh, actually acting when you're flying around with it. If you choose the follow mode, the drone will try to keep the camera level regardless of the drone's uh, orientation. You can also choose the FPV mode where the camera is following uh, the drone movement. But for most of my filming stuff, I will keep it in follow mode. There is um, the possibility to uh, calibrate the gimbal in case something is off with the gimbal and it needs calibration. I'm not going to do that right now, but you simply just put it on a level surface and then you press the auto uh, option here and then it will take care of itself. Finally, for the gimbal, there's a recent gimbal option. If you press that, it will simply tilt the, the, the gimbal uh, straight down. And if I press it again, it will put it right up in level again. Down here, you have a section that is dedicated to the remote. And uh, one of them is um, if you think that your controls are some, somehow off, then you have the option uh, to recalibrate the, the sticks on the remote. There's a program. I don't think I can access it here unless I power off the drone. That will take you through a tutorial that will show you exactly what you need to do to calibrate the sticks uh, on the remote so they are uh, doing what they are supposed to do. Also, if you're used to flying a remote controlled aircrafts that are operated in a different way than mode 2, where you have the throttle up down here on the left as well as the yaw, and you have the pitch and roll here on the right. You can change that because that's opposite in some parts of the world. If you're used to flying in mode 1, you can simply go in here and then change uh, to the desired mode that you want. But most of the world is flying, uh, at least with DJI products, are flying mode 2. So we just leave it like that. There is also access uh, to the flight beginner tutorial that you got prompted with in the beginning, the first time that you launched the app. Then there's the safety option. And uh, under this point, uh, there's uh, again some redundant information that we could access uh, from the front flight screen about the max altitude, distance and uh, return to home altitude. Below that, there's an option to dynamically set the, the home point. Also, there's a section that is dedicated to the sensors of the Mavic Mini. And uh, it currently states that the IMU is normal as well as the compass is normal. In case that the drone shows uh, some kind of erratical behavior, you might be prompted uh, to calibrate uh, the IMU. And uh, you access that to this uh, menu in here. There's a full tutorial that will show you exactly what you need to do to be able to perform that operation. I often experience when I switch location that I should calibrate the compass and you can access the calibration of the compass through this menu. But you don't need to go into the menu system to get access to that. You normally be prompted from the main flight screen with a shortcut to be able to do that. And in case you want to see how that uh, whole procedure goes down, uh, I, again, I made this very comprehensive two-part tutorial about how to get started with the Mavic Mini. And I will, uh, I can't leave a link here <laughs> for it twice, so you can access it through the link in the description below. Under the safety settings, there is an advanced option. And if we press that, we will get access to um, how the CSC command stick control mode is set up. The purpose with this function is that you can manually override the app and basically start and stop the motors of the, the drone. 
by simply pressing the sticks towards the center. So here, now the drone is starting. And then if I want to stop it, I just pull out the sticks to each side like that. And then the, the, the motors will stop. And that will happen regardless if you are in flight or not. In that way, you can prevent the drone if it starts to uh, take off to a destination that you don't want it. You could basically pick it out of the sky to prevent it from doing further damage. So in here you said how that should behave. There's also an uh, option to enable payload. And um, we are not flying around with pizzas or anything with the Mavic Mini, but uh, if you decide to fly outside uh, with the prop guards on, it might be a good idea to enable that option. Oh, in case that you happen to lose your drone and you can't find it because it's sort of landed in a remote location, then you have the option to enable Find My Drone. The Find My Drone option is a really nice tool that will show you on a map the last known flight position that was recorded for your Mavic Mini. So in that way, you can very easily find the drone. You also have the option to uh, make it start flash and beep. So you can, uh, when you get close by, easily identify where it's uh, located. In the bottom of the safety menu, there is an option called remote identification. And uh, I'm not really sure what this one does, but it kind of says that it uh, a remote identification allow observers on the ground to track where the aircraft is flying and who is piloting it, like, much like an automotive license plate. But I guess this will allow uh, DJI somehow with some sort of device to track all drones uh, that are flying around. I think we will hear a lot more about that option in the near future when legislation is changing. But right now, providing personal information is optional. So these are the hidden features that I wanted to show you with the, the Mavic Mini. Did you discover a few uh, new ones on the way? Then let me know in the comment below. By the way, did you see the video that I made about uh, how you can uh, make powerful videos directly on your smartphone in the DJI Fly app. I think you'll be surprised how powerful the editor is that DJI has provided. If you missed that video, you can access this through this card. Or you can go through the YouTube recommended through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be back on the next one.